Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. Recently I've been painting quite a few portraits so this week I thought it would be fun to sort of focus in on one part of the face, in particular an eye, and I'll show you how I create a pretty realistic eye painting going all the way from just a simple outline to finished picture. So I'm beginning to draw the outline of the eye here, paying particular attention to the shape of the corners of the eye. So it's very easy to just instinctively or habitually draw uh, a nice symmetric oval. But the reality is usually, while an oval is a you know pretty good approximation to the shape of the eye, it's generally speaking going to deviate from that nice symmetric shape somewhat. Um, and especially as we go towards the corners of the eye. And I'll probably end up correcting these lines as I paint and as I'm doing now, just making further corrections as I do the initial drawing. But really, the, you know, the, the true art of representational drawing and painting is to stay in the moment and you know, be able to observe what's actually there rather than what we expect to be there. And that, that's a continual um, quest, really. It's, it, you know, it's, it doesn't matter how experienced you become, in my opinion, it, you're always kind of um, having to consciously just stop and think, OK, you know, what is going on? And then having decided what's going on, you've got to be continually happy to accept the fact that you may well have got it wrong on your on your previous assessment and just correct and correct and correct until you either get you know something that you're happy with or you just get tired of correcting and you think well that's enough for today and you just leave it there and then hopefully you know all is well so while i was chatting away there i've put in the shape of the iris and the uh just a little indication of the pupil i don't have to be too precise about that because obviously i'm going to paint over this in a moment but in doing that, I can now see that the shape of the upper lid uh, was incorrect. Um, but not too bad now for a first go. But I will just bring this down here. And then we can start to indicate the shape of the eyelid. So the peak of the eyelid occurs um, about there above the iris. So you know, the, the top of the circle of the iris is here, but the top of the eyelid continues to peak off to the left. And then that kind of comes down here like this. And then the lower lid comes in there and then we've got a couple of um, little creases and folds in the skin and that's probably enough for the initial drawing and now I can get going with the paint. So I'm starting out with some interactive acrylic. I've got some pearlescent tinting white here then I've got some cadmium yellow deep so I'm going to add some of that to the white and then grab a touch of alizarin crimson and I've also got some ultramarine blue and some burnt umber on my palette. I'm using a one inch flat synthetic brush and what I'm doing to begin with here is in terms of painting the eye the first thing to do I would say is to paint the stuff around the eye. Okay so what I've mixed up here is a reasonable approximation to the colour of the skin around the eye. And I've just sprayed the surface of the painting with water and that's going to allow the paint I'm applying now to just glide over that surface a lot more easily and quickly than it otherwise would. So it's just going to save me a little bit of time. And at this stage I'm just going to trust the drawing that I've put down, the, 
the prelim drawing because, you know, I will make further corrections. But for the moment, I just want to block in some colour, which is a little close, closer to being correct than the kind of rather bright orange that I've got uh, in the background at the moment. Now, that bright orange is still helping me, you know, because it's, it's helping me kind of uh, judge tone a little better. I can go lighter and darker on top of that mid-tone. And also, it's not a million miles away from the, the skin colour, so if any of that shows through, it's just going to add, add a little bit of warmth to this colour that I'm putting down at the moment. It's not like trying to paint this skin colour on top of, uh, say, a dark blue or a green, perhaps, which, which could potentially cause a few problems. Now, I'd run out of paint on the palette, so I just mixed up some more of that same colour. It's come out a little bit darker than before, um, but uh, you know, nothing to be overly concerned about. And I'm just keeping the, the interactive paint that I'm applying nice and damp with the water spray. Um, because the whole point of these interactives is that if we keep them active using the the water spray, then we can continually blend, uh, blend and re-blend, which is a lovely way to quickly create some soft edges, which is what I'm about to do in just a moment. So having done that, let's grab some more of the tinting white and I'll just pick up the edge of that patch of skin colour I had before and we'll just use this as a highlight colour. So again, I'm going to keep the paint nice and moist. Squinting at my reference, I can see that on the right hand side of the eyelid, there's some light catching there. So I'll just block that in. And then on the rim of the uh, lower lid, still using the same flat brush, but edge on. I'll put in a little indication of a highlight there. Down here below the lower lid as well. Grab a bit more paint. Put some in around here and going into the corner of the eye. Indicate the side of the nose a little bit. I mean, I'm focusing purely on the eye really for, for this demo, but you know, we have to place it in its own little environment, otherwise, it would look a bit odd to say the least. So, a bit of a highlight up there and perhaps some here as well. And now what I can do is look at the darker tones around the eye. So I've just added a little bit of the alizarin crimson to what was left of that skin colour. I'm just going to pick up the tiniest amount of ultramarine blue and mix that fairly thoroughly on my brush. Again, I'm going to come in with the, with the water spray and then, again, squinting at my reference, now I want to put in not the darkest shadows, but just block in areas which are in shadow. So just above the eyelid, uh, yeah, the under, um, underneath the top edge of the eye socket, it's fairly dark. The uh, top of the eyelid itself is fairly dark up here as well. I've just got a stray brush hair there. So let's remove that. Um, so it's fairly dark up here. Now the tone, of, oh sorry, the, the colour of the shadow changes quite a bit actually over to the left here. But for now, I'm just going to use this one colour to put in all the kind of mid shadow areas. There's a bit of darkness around here on the right hand corner of the eye as well and then the underside of the upper lid there's definitely some darkness here which we can continue up above the iris and then 
and down into the corner of the eye as well. Got a little dark touch in the very corner of the eye. That went a bit wayward, so we'll lift off a bit of that with the finger. And we'll put a little bit there as well. OK, so now having done that, I can grab some more of the blue. I'll mix that onto into what's already on the brush and put a little bit more of the alizarin crimson in as well. Get a bit more. And once again, just a light mist with the water. And now I can start to put some of the darker shadows in. So let's have a look. So the flat brush allows me to switch, you know, immediately between blocking in reasonably sized areas of the paper. And then if I use it like a little knife, like I am now, I can immediately put in surprisingly fine lines. You know, it's not as good as a smaller brush for, for super detailed work, but it isn't too bad. So I kind of did my drawing earlier with the watercolour marker and now having added some paint I'm just doing a little bit more drawing with the brush. And then we can use this colour to add some darker shadows. on the upper eyelid. And then I'm going to take that same colour, remove most of it from the brush, pick up a lot more of the white. Let's get a healthy dollop of that. And let's see what that looks like if we put that in here. That's not too bad. Um, so I just wanted to add a bit more of a blue to that left hand shadow uh, for the eye socket there. We'll add a touch of that under the lower lid. A little touch here as well. So what we've done now is, you know, it's, it's fairly crude still, but we've blocked in the surrounding flesh and the surrounding structure of the eye socket. So now I'm actually, and the lids as well. So now I'm actually ready to start painting the eye itself. Now, when it comes to painting the white of the eye, the whites of the eye are very seldom, you know, pure white. In fact, they're normally a milky kind of bluey gray. So I've got kind of a bluey gray on my brush already, but it's too dark. So we'll grab some more of the tinting white and mix that in with what's on the brush. And then let's just see what that looks like as a starting point. So that's not too bad. It's perhaps still a little dark. In fact, I would say it definitely is. So let's grab some more of the white. And that's still too dark, but uh, I'm going to persist with this color just to block in the area of the eye surrounding the iris. Again, much like the, the background orange that I primed the paper with, this colour is really just going to serve as a first layer, you know, on, onto which I can add highlights and lowlights and change the colours. You know, as I see fit.
and then while we've got that colour on the brush, well actually what I'm going to do is wipe off most of the paint off the brush. So I've pretty much got just pure white on my brush now and I'm going to go back into that uh, colour I just put down and just blend some of that into the areas which need to be lightened. You know, in a reasonably, you know, simplified way. So I'm just really squinting at my reference and just lightening areas on the whole rather than rather than getting too fiddly and too detailed. So but it's certainly something to be aware of that when we're painting the whites of the eye, there is often quite a considerable variation in colour and tone from one side of the eye to the other. Okay, so now we're ready to put down a bit of colour into the iris. So, you know, we think of people as having blue or green eyes um, and you know, like most things though, the colour that the eye appears is going to depend dramatically on the lighting conditions. And then also within those so-called blue or green eyes, um, there's a variation of colour anyway. So I've just added a little bit of ultramarine blue to that very pale grey that I had on my brush. And as you can see, I'm just using this to, you know, it's a, it's a first approximation really that we're, that we're putting in always. Now I'm deliberately kind of scumbling the brush or, or wiggling it left and right as I apply the paint here, which isn't something I've done so far on this painting. And the reason I'm doing that is, I, I don't know whether it's going to entirely work, but the plan, I'm just going to go over this, iris, um, over this pupil circle, by the way. But the plan is that perhaps a little bit of the underlying orange will show through um, and some of the texture may show through in the finished painting. And that may be a nice little shortcut to creating some of the the texture and the sort of structure that's that's present in the iris. Now, whether that you know proves to be the case or not, we'll wait and see. But it's kind of worth doing at this stage because it may may save us a little bit of time, and it may produce you know a few nice effects as well. So having done that, we can now go darker. So when I look at my reference, the sweeping statement, the edge of the iris is considerably darker than the rest of the iris. So I'm just picking up some of the ultramarine blue and mixing that into um, one of the pale skin tone colours that I had from earlier. Again, I'm just going to moisten the surface of the painting and again squinting at my reference just really picking out regions of, of dark now. Now the colour I've got here is a little bit too pure blue and it isn't quite dark enough so I'm going to take some more of the blue and put some of the cad yellow deep in. And that's going to hopefully give us a, a deep green which is closer in colour and that, that is better. Now, the more you look, you know, close up at an eye, the more detail you see reflected in the eye. But at this stage, we, we don't want to be concerned by that. We just want to block in large areas of dark and light. And because I've been keeping the paint, the surface of the paint wet, I'm getting a little bit of, uh, you know, automatic blending going on. So if I just lightly feather the brush over the underlying layer of paint, and I can get a lighter tone put down because the two mix and blend, 
than if I just slap it on more thickly. So it's really, you know, very simple way of working, but it, it's quite a, it can be quite effective and save you a lot of time. So next there's a kind of uh, much more yellowy green going on in the centre of the eye. So I'm just going to scrape off most of the, the paint I've got on the brush, pick up some more of that uh, cad yellow deep and mix that fairly thoroughly on the brush. And that's not, you know, it's not ideal, but it's not too bad, I don't think. So let's, um, let's add that to the eye. That's not too far out. So again, I'm not getting carried away with uh, detailed shapes, but I just want to introduce some green to the iris. And while we're mapping out, you know, everything that's going on in the eye, now would be a good time to put the pupil in as well. So I've switched to a small round brush and I'm grabbing uh, a mixture of burnt umber and ultramarine blue to mix up a very dark colour, which isn't pure black, but, you know, it's, it's pretty close to sort of a, well, it's a bluey black, I would say. And what I'm going to do is just put in a solid disc here. You know, if the paint blends a little bit at this stage, it's not a big deal because um, I'm almost certainly going to paint over goodly portions of uh, what I'm putting down at the moment. Put, put the paint down fairly thickly just to place the pupil in the eye. And then I want to you know, let the kind of main part of the eye dry a little bit now. And I can go back uh, while that's drying to working on the areas surrounding the eye. I switched to a small filbert and I'm just beginning by mixing some of the tinting white into that skin colour that I had from earlier. And we'll see what that looks like when I put that on the lower lid. So it's not quite light enough, but it's OK for the moment. So we're going to put in a line of that. Coming down through the lower lid. And I'm going to add a bit more white. And put in some of the lighter tones on the upper lid as well. And then we'll look at the uh, the structure of the way the skin folds around the corner of the eye. There's a bit of light catch, catching there as well, and then just above the lid in the corner of the eye there, which I've just kind of messed up really, but we can correct that later. Um, 
front of the brush is really too small for what I'm about to do, but I'll just sort of blast that in across uh, this region as well. And then having done that, we can take that same colour and add some more of the alizarin to the mixture. So now we're going much more into the pinks. And let's use some of that in here. On the underside of the upper lid. And a slightly paler version of that as well, just below that highlight line that I put in on the lower lid. And that same colour is going to be useful for the, the very corner of the eye too. I seem to have picked up a bit too much white on the brush, so let's, uh, let's cover that up. And there's actually, you know, um, perhaps a surprising amount of pink in the white of the eye as well. So we can begin to introduce that in this left hand corner. There's a bit of shadow being cast onto the eyeball from the, from the eyelids. So we can begin to put that in. And then this area up here is uh, much redder than I've currently got it. So let's put, let's get the painting a little damper than it is because I'm starting to lose my uh, blending ability, which you know, we don't want to lose just yet. A little dark there, I think. I'll, well, I'll just put that same colour down. We'll see how it blends in, but I might add a bit of uh, I might add a bit of white or some of the yellow ochre. But that's not it's not too bad. And I need to blend this shadow area so that it just gradually becomes lighter as it approaches the, the edge of the eyelid. And then the distinction between shadow and light is a little harsher um, as we move to the upper part of the lid. but it's still a relatively soft edge. So that's beginning to get there. And then that same dark pink color I can use to begin to just put a little fine line of color in between the, need to go a bit lighter than that, in between the lower lid and the white of the eye. Oops, that went on way too heavy.
So one of the tricks I use is that if the colour I put down ends up being, for example, darker or, you know, the brush is too heavily loaded so that I'm putting down a heavier line than I want. Well, rather than kind of immediately clean the brush or change the colour, what I'll do is I'll look and see, well, can I use that colour I've already got elsewhere on the painting? Um, and usually you can, you know, usually there's somewhere where you can make use of it. Um, even if it's not exactly the colour you want, it's probably going to be closer to something that you'll need to paint in a bit anyway. So you may as well kind of keep going with it. Just added a bit of blue to that same colour. I'm just using that to enhance the shadow here on the right hand upper edge of the eyeball. Going back towards the red. So as well as spraying the, the painting itself, we can just spray water on the palette. It's just a nice way to keep the, the paint at the consistency you want, you know, without flooding the whole thing with water. And then I'm just mixing my brush into one of the more dark bluish grey shadows I had just to change the colour and add a little bit of shadow there. And here as well. And then we're going to have to deal with eyelashes and things in a bit. But before I get into that, I'm going to go over towards the brown. So let's grab a little bit of the burnt umber. And I'm mixing that into the colour I was using a moment ago. And let's uh, put some of that over here. It's kind of a nice deeper shadow colour. So the, the skin tones around the eye are beginning to come together reasonably well. Still need to, I still think things are a little bit too yellow along here, so I'll perhaps correct that in just a moment. But I want to go back to the iris and um, I'm taking some of the ultramarine blue, some of the tinting white. Let's mix those two together. And I think this is probably going to be a bit too pure of a blue colour, but we'll start off and see what, what we end up with. Um, yeah, it is a little bit. So I'm just going to add a little bit of the burnt umber to that. And again, let's keep the surface fairly wet. So really a lot of painting is um, just looking at the big shapes as if they're abstract shapes, painting those in first and then gradually refining and going smaller and smaller. So I'm going to mix a little bit of this green I've got here from earlier into that blue and put that in here. And a little bit down here as well. And then I want to add a little more yellow to that patch of green that I put in earlier. So I'm mixing some of the Cad Yellow Deep into the colour I've got there. I'll just add a few flecks of that. Into the eye. Now going back to something close to the colour I had up here, so that's too dark, but I want a, I want a slightly lighter version of the colour I had before, so I'm just adding some more white. That's not too bad. Let's uh, put some of that in. Making 
continue that over here on the left. A couple of patches there. A little streak through there as well. So the iris is starting to get a little bit more complexity to its colouring. So I've switched back, well not switched back to, but I've switched to a half inch flat. And I'm just mixing that into some of the, um, some tinting white into the pale pink I had. And I just want to, as I mentioned earlier, adjust the colour I've got here below the eye. So let's get this highlight colour in. So it's come out a little darker than I'd hoped, but oh no, it's not, that's not too bad, not too bad. So it could probably do with being paler and yellower, to be honest. So let's add just a touch of uh, that cad yellow deep. Oh, okay. I need to go and clean my palette because I've just dipped my brush into the burnt umber. So I'll be back when I've done that. All right, well, I actually decided to let the painting get close to touch dry. And I've just mixed up some tinting white with a little bit of the alizarin to give me a pale pink. So I'm just going to add that in here uh, on the area that I was intending to work on earlier. Uh, and that's, that's working reasonably well. So the tinting white, um, as the name implies, um, is obviously great for tinting, but um, it's slightly translucent. So it, um, it gives you much sort of softer highlights than titanium white would. However, the titanium white, just blocking in some lighter skin tone over here on the left while I'm chatting away, um, the titanium white is much more opaque. And so that's you know much better for making highlights pop and um, you know, just generally coverage is much better with the titanium white. So I'm just blasting in a little bit of this light tone just to add a little bit more to the, the background and then I'm going to come back to the eyelid and use some of this colour here using my half inch flat brush. I can't remember whether I mentioned that a second ago or not. And just going to put in Make some of these highlights pop a little more. Got a bit too much of the crimson there. Let's get a bit more of the white. And also on this, uh, the upper edge of the lower lid as well. That could do with being a little lighter and brighter. All right, well, the next thing I want to do is darken this pupil again. So using my filbert brush, I'm taking, just like I did before, I'm taking some of the burnt umber and some of the ultramarine blue and mixing those together to get a nice dark colour, nice bluey black. And uh, let's make this pupil really dark. Now, next, I want to darken some of the upper part of the iris because that's, you know, in a reasonable amount of shadow due to being partially covered by the upper eyelid. So I'm grabbing some of the ultramarine blue and a little bit of the cad yellow deep. Let's get some more of the blue in there. 
that's created quite a nice dark green so we'll see how well that uh, works when we add it onto the painting that's perhaps a little bit too dark let's um add a touch more of the yellow that's a bit more like it i think so um, it's perhaps a little too green now, but in terms of tone, I don't think it's too bad. So what I plan on doing is I'm going to add this colour up around this upper edge. And then in just a second, I'll add a bit more tinted white. And as I kind of pull it down towards the the lower part of the eye so let's uh, let's do that let's grab a little bit of the tinting white and put that in to that same green and just soften that lower edge and kind of tease out the area of shadow we've created and then as we come round to the left it becomes much closer to a pure blue so I've just added some ultramarine blue to that same mixture and we'll blend that into the left edge of that original patch of colour and then bring that round the edge of the iris but in, in using the type of uh, brush marks that I'm doing at the moment I'm going to I'm in danger of creating just a sort of a solid outline to the iris which I, do, which I don't particularly want so we will come back and address that, that in just a moment it goes much lighter here so I've skipped that part for now but it's about the same color over on the right hand side about the same tone And then perhaps a little bit lighter again down towards the bottom so we'll add a bit of the tinting white and use that lighter color to fill in that gap that I just mentioned and then a quick uh, a mess with the water and uh, what we'll do is just tease out some of these rather hard edges that I've created so keep the the brush strokes going radially inward towards the pupil and have the odd one go a bit further like that if I sweep the filbert sort of sideways that way it kind of automatically creates a different brush stroke to using it edge on so you generally when you're painting you know living things you, where possible you want to avoid you know, the repetition of the same brush stroke over and over um, because there's generally kind of a random element to living things certainly in terms of the texture and the surface structure you get so we can put a little bit of this darker color in here as well now the white of the eye to the left of the iris is really you know it's really quite blue almost violet so this is a mixture of the tinting white, a little touch of the ultramarine blue, 
and then, then I mixed in a bit of that pale pink I used earlier um, just to make just to push it a little bit towards the violet And then I can use that same colour over here on the right hand side. And then I can go even darker with that colour and perhaps add a little bit more red. So let's grab a little bit of the ultramarine, just the tiniest touch of the crimson. Whoops, oh, dropped my brush. One second. OK, well, sorry about that, but um, I'm back. I can't remember where I was with the uh, with the mixing, so I'll just put this colour on. Oh, I think I think I had mixed up what I wanted pretty much. So we can actually darken the area under the iris there, because that's in a little bit more shadow than the other parts of the white of the eye. Um, and of course, this is one what's what I think what hopefully is being highlighted um, is that you know by working up all areas of the painting at once, it kind of helps you judge the colour that you put down earlier better. So, for example, the, the light colour I've got on the upper part of the lower lid, it wasn't really looking light enough. And it still isn't in places. I will need to add some highlights, but it's certainly looking better than it was now that I've put this uh, blue next to it. So, you know, having a cool colour next to a warmer colour does, um, you know, change the way things look. Um, let's use some of that same colour that I've got on the brush at the moment in here in the left corner of the eye. And while we're over here in the corner, I'm going to use a mixture of mostly the alizarin crimson and uh, a bit of the blue to add a little more detail. And then I'm going to add some more of the crimson to that mixture, a little bit of the cad yellow deep. Push it more towards um, uh, cadmium red. Add a little bit of the tinting white. And let's see what that looks like. It's not too bad. I think it needs a bit more white there. And perhaps even a little bit of the blue. Still need a lot more white. So let's see what this looks like. Here we go. That's a little better. So we'll just use that in there to fill that whole area. I'll come back in and put highlights in in a moment. I think I can continue with that color a little bit under here. Just applying it very lightly 
And then I'm just looking around other areas of the eyeball where I could perhaps use a touch of that. Let's put a little bit in there. I'm not going to get into drawing every single um, vein that appears on my eyeball, but uh, we can just, you know, hint at hint at some of them with a bit of with a touch of colour, basically. And then if I go back and grab a bit more of the blue and mix that in, that's going to give me a different purpley colour to the one I had before uh, when I was sort of in this area. So I think that's a bit too dark. A bit more of the white again. Just put a touch of that in there up here as well and then I think we're ready now for some eyelashes or oh, fairly soon but actually before I do that given that I've got this red color here I'm going to add I'm going to use that to help um, enhance some of the shadows and things above the eye so having cleaned my brush let's dip back into that kind of nice cad red pink that I had and we'll see where we can make this work. So I think a little touch in here is going to be good. Could do with being a bit darker, but it, you know, it's all right for the moment. Put a bit more in the corner of the eye there. Put a little bit under the lid there. So one of the things you can do with a line of shadow, you know, perhaps a lot, if you were just using a pencil or a pen and you were just going to draw a line, when you come to paint it, you can see how I've got this kind of grey brown here on for the beginnings of this line. So as I come up here, I can make that line go into the more ready purple that I'm using on my brush at the moment. Continue that up here. another little bit over here and then what I'm going to do now is add some blue to that same color so that's going to push it more towards the purple and so what would be just one tone if you were um, drawing it with a pencil perhaps when you come to paint you can change the color and the tone as you go along a particular line. And that colour is going to be useful over here too. Whoops, that, that went a little bit uh, the wrong way. So I want to go back towards the red, so I'm just dipping back into a more reddish patch of colour that I had going to add a bit more of the tinting white as we come up here above the eye um, and that's not that's got that's got too much blue in the mix so I'm going to come back in and add a lot more white go back into that pinker color that I had just soften that a bit it's, it's still not quite the right shade but it'll It'll be okay for now I think. And now we can start to think about putting some indication of the eyelashes in. Now I'm definitely not in the business of painting every single eyelash but what we can do is mix up some of the ultramarine blue and the burnt umber. I'm going to go a little bit more towards the blue this time. And I'm, I am going to add a little bit of uh, tinting white to that. OK, so it's not going to be a pure black like I used for the pupil. Or a dark, very dark colour like I used for the pupil. And what I'm going to do is rather than try and draw each eyelash, I'm going to look at the general shapes of the clumps of eyelashes. So just above the centre of the iris, there's kind of a clumpy bit, which looks a bit like like that. And then to the left, there's another clumpy bit which looks like that, and so on. Okay, 
and then as I come over here there's a bit of a, another clump there I put that on a bit too heavy but I think it'll be okay and then as I move left the direction in which the the kind of little groups of lashes are falling is kind of tipping left a bit more and then as I move over to the right of the eye from the angle we're looking at it there's kind of a three pronged clump Now at the moment, the colours I'm using, I'm sticking with just one colour, so that's not ideal. So let's add, let's make it a little bit more browny. Let's add a little bit of uh, the cad yellow to that. And a touch of the red. And a touch more tinting white. And that's not particularly the colour I was after actually, but it is different to what I had before, so that's okay. So if I come over here... So what you're looking to do really is capture the general character of the lashes. So, for example, you might draw in just with a bit of light dry brush. A couple of longer lashes. Like that. Um, and then one over here, perhaps. And one over there. And then as it get as they become sort of more bunched up towards the eye, you can, um, you know, do what I did here and just mimic the patterns of or the shape of the little clumps that you get then on the lower lid there's the, the lashes are looking a lot lighter but i can there's a couple of little dark bits here and there now the eyelashes when they cross the shadow part look considerably lighter um, but they are barely visible in the reference so i will include them but before i get to that Let's grab some more of the tinting white. And what I'm going to do is just use this to begin to put some highlights in some where you know, the light is catching. So, for example, in the corner of the eye here. And because the white's fairly translucent, as mentioned earlier, what I'm hoping is. This is going to allow me to put down some soft highlights. That aren't going to appear pure white. Now, on this lower lid, I don't intend to, you know, even indicate the, the lower lashes but what I'm going to do is draw in the little gaps of light where the lashes aren't and the light is kind of pouring through and catching the edge of this lower lid Now, as we come over to the left side, um, it isn't quite as bright, so I'm just going to mix in a little bit of the pink that we had earlier. So it will still be a highlight, but yeah, not quite as, oh, that's a bit too much of the pink. Whoops, I picked up uh, titanium white there by mistake, but we'll see. We'll see what happens when we do that. OK, so that's working reasonably well. And then I can come in and add some highlight in the corner of the eye here. With that same colour. Let's add a bit more of the pink to that mixture and enhance. Oh, that came out way too dark. Uh, so let's add some more white. Let's add a bit more of a highlight down there. Over here on the left, that's perhaps a little too bright, so we'll soften that with the finger. And then I've added just a hint of blue to the tinting white and I'm going to use this to begin to introduce some highlights. 
both in the white of the eye and as you can see in the iris. And I'm just going to add a little touch down here as well. So these are pale blue highlights. And then we can add some pure titanium white. So if I squint at my reference, that allows me to pick out the very brightest areas. So we're creating little flares of pure white within the larger highlight. And then even in the corner of the eye here, we can put a little flash of pure white or two. So next I've mixed up something close to a yellow ochre using the Cad Yellow Deep and touch of the red and some of the tinting white. And that's not pale enough, so I'm just adding some more of the, the white. And I'm not going to go too wild on on this, but just hinting at a couple of eyelashes coming down here over this bit of shadow on the right. And then we'll put a couple of flicks in there. And then we'll grab some more of the white into that mixture and put a few of the lower lashes in, just a couple. I've added a little bit of red, just a tiny bit, and a bit more white, and I'm going to use that to put a little highlight, subdued highlight, in under the lid of the eye there. Pop a little bit of that in here as well. Back to my darker upper eyelash colour from earlier, and I'm just going to put a little line in there just to fill out the lashes a little bit more. And then I've mixed up a very pale green from the, the blue, the cad yellow deep, and a considerable amount of the of the white. And I'm just going to very delicately put in a few little touches. Of that colour in the iris. So here's a look at the finished painting and you know obviously I've been painting much bigger than life size so maybe five times life size something like that so to get the best effect or the best impact I guess uh, with this one need to kind of step back from the painting a bit um, but anyway really enjoyed this just a little change of direction for me um, Got plenty of other ideas lined up for future weeks, so I hope to see you next Sunday for the next episode of the Sunday Art Show. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe, and thanks very much for watching.